What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. I'm sure by the title and by the thumbnail you can probably tell what I'm going to be talking about today. This is a video that I wish I never had to make. And I don't feel like I have to make it, but also my channel is all about sharing life and real life and what's going on. And Milo was such, such a big part of my life. And I felt like I couldn't move on with posting videos on this channel without addressing that he's gone. This video is going to be very hard for me to make and I'm going to try to not cry through the whole thing. So I guess might as well jump right into it. I guess I'll start by just going back to like earlier in the summer. I made a couple videos I think on just like what was going on with Milo so I won't like talk a ton on that right now but if you're interested in getting like more details on like the beginning of this whole thing you can watch those videos here so early in the summer in june we had an ultrasound done for milo because there were indications that he maybe had cancer and he ended up having his spleen removed that had a cancerous mass on it uh, he had spindle cell sarcoma and we were told that spindle cell sarcoma is very aggressive and that it spreads really quickly but at the time of his surgery there was no indication that there was spread anywhere which was good we talked to an oncologist a few weeks after his surgery and he basically told us that spindle cell sarcoma is so rare and like there's not a ton of research done on like what chemos work best for this type of cancer and they could offer us chemo but they couldn't make any guarantees that any type of chemo would stop any sort of spread. Milo's 14 and we were like okay he's an old guy like we would hate for him to spend the rest of his life doing chemo and then it not do anything and he's just spent the rest of his life like not feeling great. It just didn't really make sense to us to put him through that, so we decided not to. He had a couple good months, and then everything I feel like kind of started going downhill in August. We went on a trip to see our families in Illinois, and the week prior to that, Milo had been throwing up. He wasn't like sick, but he was throwing up like in the morning and then occasionally in the evening but he was like still eating his food. He was still pretty active for his age. So we put him on some anti-nausea medicine because we did not want to miss out on going to see our family because we missed out on going to see our family earlier in the summer because of his surgery. So we got him all settled. The anti-nausea medicine was good. The vet recommended that we also change his food because he like really wasn't interested in his kibble anymore. We started giving him new food, which I honestly can't even remember the brand of, but he like liked it initially and then stopped liking it. So we sent him to the border with the new food, the anti-nausea, and he hates being boarded. Like he has such bad separation anxiety and he doesn't really get along with other dogs so it's not like we can board him in a place where like he can just chill and play with other dogs it was always like boarding him in a place where he was in a private room which is good for him to like not be socialized with other dogs but his separation anxiety is so bad that like it just really stresses him out and he doesn't have a good time. He did okay for the first couple of days and then they kind of let us know that he was starting to have some diarrhea and like just not doing great. He wasn't, by the last day, he like wasn't really eating the new food. And so we picked him up and we could just tell that he wasn't feeling good. He just seemed so skinny, which we couldn't tell if that was like just from him being nauseous and throwing up and then having stress and not eating his food and having diarrhea like we just didn't know our vet told us that he had gone down in weight a little bit and he was probably more like seven pounds instead of 10 which was like his healthy weight we ended up getting in contact with the vet we just let her know that he was now having diarrhea and a little nauseous still 
and now he's not eating his food. What do we do? At least at the time, which this totally could have been what it was, but the vet was telling us that he probably just had some sort of like stress-induced colitis, which made sense because he was probably just stressed out all weekend. So she gave him something for that. She gave him more anti-nausea medicine. And we gave him that regularly for a little bit and that definitely helped. She did recommend that we do a follow-up ultrasound just to see what was going on. She wasn't like seeming specifically concerned about the situation that had happened after being boarded. Um, it was more just like he did have an aggressive type of cancer and he's not been feeling great um so it would just be good to kind of follow up and see what's going on i honestly put that off for a little bit i don't think it was intentional maybe subconsciously it was intentional i ended up this was probably the beginning of october i called and made an appointment for an ultrasound luckily they had one like just in a few days i think i called on like a wednesday and they had something available on that following Monday. And then the next day, I was at work and I was finishing things up, which the timing ended up being just fine. Kiffer was home with Milo and he let me know that Milo had started having some bloody diarrhea. And so I freaked out and rightfully so, I freaked out and I came home. Luckily I was done with my day and we took Milo to the emergency vet and the vet there basically told us that there was nothing specific that she could see or feel that was maybe causing this. He didn't really have a fever. Like he seemed mostly okay besides the fact that he probably wasn't feeling good from whatever was going on and he was having bloody diarrhea. Like that was kind of it. And we had told her that we were going for an ultrasound on Monday. So basically she just said like, I'm gonna give him a probiotic to hopefully make him feel better and then just follow up with your ultrasound on Monday. So over the weekend, things got a little bit better. Like he wasn't having as many issues over the weekend, which was good. We took him for his ultrasound on Monday and this is probably where it's going to start to get hard for me to talk about the situation. We took him for the ultrasound and I was preparing myself for the worst because we were aware that his type of cancer is very aggressive. I don't really know what I was expecting, but what we found out was a lot. He went in for his ultrasound and he was in there for about an hour and we talked to the vet after. She said, unfortunately, there were things that she did find. So Milo had his spleen removed in June. This is now October, spleen and the cancerous mass. Now in place of his spleen, there was a swollen lymph node taking up the whole entire cavity that was there from his spleen. He had a mass in his stomach with an ulcer and he had multiple masses along his intestines and he had multiple swollen lymph nodes throughout his abdomen. She recommended, and we were totally on board with this, that Due to the fact that he had a major surgery not that long ago, he's very elderly, and what they assume is the same cancer that he had before is very widespread. She recommended that we don't move forward with any sort of procedure. So uh, we got in the car and we cried a lot. And the next few days after that were really hard because we didn't know, like, are, like, are we supposed to put him down? Like, what, like, we don't really know. We had never done it before. And our vet followed up with us based on what the ultrasound vet found. And she told us that there were some options that we could give to him to help keep him comfortable. And before we talked to her, we had already kind of talked about that, like, we didn't want to just keep him comfortable like that kind of felt selfish for us like at this point he was sleeping a lot more he was eating really really well we actually changed his food to the farmer's dog later but he absolutely loved his farmer's dog food so that wasn't an issue anymore but we just knew that we didn't want to keep him around just so he could be around like if he wasn't going to be feeling well we didn't want that for him the vet also talked to us about what 
she would recommend when it comes to end of life and she basically said that a good way of knowing how it may be time for your dog to be put down is choose three of their top traits like or three things about them that are like so them like how they eat or their activity or their personality or like their desire to play desire to go on a walk like that kind of stuff she said pick three of those things about Milo and then when two of them are no longer existent or have severely decreased it's usually time and we talked about it and it's like there's so much about Milo that's so Milo there were so many things about Milo that were so different now so in our heads we're immediately like so we're supposed to put him down we're so emotional felt like so heartbroken which I know that's how it goes for so many people is you have to make a decision in the moment, which I'm so thankful we didn't have to do. But I had some time the night that we talked about the vet alone to just like think and pray and like be with all of this new information in my head. And we had decided on that we would have an in-home service come to put Milo down. And so I was looking on their website some, just kind of seeing what our options were. And one of the things that they would offer is like a consultation. So I was like, you know what, maybe I should just send them an email, tell them where we're at, and then kind of go from there. So I sent an email, the company is called Compassionate Heart. I will leave them down in the description below um, for anyone who is going to be going through what we went through at some point, or if you're currently going through what we went through and you're in the San Diego area, or I think also in the Chicagoland area, if you need a good recommendation, I would give them 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100 stars. Like our experience with them was amazing. So I sent the vet an email and I kind of explained to her that we like weren't really sure what to do. We knew Milo wasn't doing well, but we also didn't feel like it was desperate for us to put him down. So she actually sent us a link to a couple different quality of life quizzes, which I will also link down below. And she said, take those and kind of give you a better idea. We can obviously do a consultation, but those are really great resources. So hopefully that'll help you. So we took both of the quizzes and basically it seemed like if your pet was below 50%, that was kind of an indication that it was probably time. And Milo got on both around a 60%. So we we're like, okay, 60% is not 50% or below. He probably has a little bit more time. This was end of October. And so we we're like, okay, we're just gonna take it day by day, maybe middle of the week or end of the week, we retake the test and see where he's at. That was like on a Sunday when we took that first test. And then he honestly had a pretty good week, like a little more energy, like just feeling a little better. And so that following weekend, we didn't even end up taking the quiz. We were like, well, he's doing better, so he'd probably get a better score <laughs> than he did the last time. And then it was either Sunday or Monday, we could tell that he really wasn't feeling good. He ate his breakfast, which he was always excited for food, no matter how bad he felt. And then he pretty much just went to sleep after that and slept for the majority of the day until it was time to eat again, or unless he needed to go out. We were like, okay, like he could just be having a bad day, but we need to like keep this in mind moving forward. And then the next day he wasn't feeling good. And then it was Tuesday and he wasn't feeling good either. And that night we made the hard decision that it was time. I was not ready to send the email. So waited until Wednesday. I emailed the vet at Compassionate Heart and I let her know. This had been like a week and a half since our last conversation with her. And I let her know like, hey, sadly think that it is time for us to put Milo down. She wanted to do a phone consultation because she hadn't really heard any of Milo's story or where he was at. She didn't really, she didn't know how old he was, that he had cancer. And I'm sure it is very much within her job description to make sure that our pets are really ready to be put down and kind of help give us guidance and clarity if we need it. So the following day, I had a phone call with her, explained everything to her and she was very kind. And we set up an appointment for Saturday, November 6th at noon. She wanted to make sure that 
we were gonna have some time to spend with Milo before Saturday. I was working Friday during the day, but let her know that I had all Friday evening and all Saturday morning to be with him. And so that's what we did. We spent so much time with him, just like snuggling him and giving him treats. And then Saturday came and she came at noon and I don't really wanna get into the whole experience that we had, but I will say that Doing it at home was the best decision. It was incredibly peaceful for us and for Milo. The one thing that I do want to share that was just like sweet and fun for us and for Milo was during the first part of the process, uh, she recommended that there was some sort of food distraction. She asked if Milo was still eating, if he was still interested in food and we are like, yeah, that's the one thing that hasn't changed. That is the one thing that has significantly stayed the same and maybe even he's become more food driven. And so she was like, do you have anything specific that you want to give him? And the night before I had actually made some sweet laurel chocolate chip cookies, not with this in mind, more so just because I wanted cookies and I knew I was going to be sad. We decided that he was gonna get a chocolate chip cookie. And it feels so dumb that that makes me emotional. I will forever think of Milo now when I eat a chocolate chip cookie. And it'll be special and I love that. But he devoured half of a cookie. He loved it so much. The process probably lasted about a half an hour. Like from the time that the vet came to the time that she let us know that he was at peace. And it was so sad and so hard. But at the same time, there was so much relief knowing that his sweet soul that we loved so much was no longer in his cancer-filled body. He was now in heaven. We as Christians, Kiffer and I believe that our pets go to heaven. They are so special to us and we can't imagine them not returning to their creator. So he was in heaven. We were so thankful for that. Even through our tears and our sadness, that was just something that we kept saying that he's running free. He's eating all the chocolate chip cookies he could want to eat. While it was so, so, so hard, we knew that it was the right decision and we had made the right choice. It was the hardest decision and the hardest day of my life. Looking back, there is no part of me that wishes we had done anything differently. We were so incredibly grateful and thankful that we had time to start grieving the loss that we were going to experience. I know that not everybody gets three to four weeks between the time that there's a diagnosis to the time when you have to put your pet down. I don't think we could have soaked up those weeks any more than we possibly did. It was just like the situation could not have gone any better. We were just so thankful that we had time to know what was coming. The transition has been really, really hard. It's been hard to go to bed without him, wake up without him, come home and you're so used to someone greeting you so excitedly and they're just not not there. Definitely an adjustment that I think will take such a long time to get used to. We miss him a lot and it's really, really hard to not have him here, but I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you've made it this far, I know it's gonna be long. Um, I appreciate all of you who loved on Milo and knew Milo and he was just my best little guy. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully the next videos to come will not be so sad. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.